And we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. As usual, it's me, Jake Baldino, and today we're talking about Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, finally. Uh, I bought into the early access special edition to play through the whole thing and talk about it with you guys here. Uh, this was actually pretty exciting for me personally. Uh, when we started Before You Buy, I started it with Batman Arkham Knight. That was our first Before You Buy video. Don't look it up and watch it, it, it it's bad. But we're back with Rocksteady, the developer's next game, a further foray into the DC universe. I love DC comics, I love Rocksteady games, and uh, yeah, you might already tell from the tone of my voice, but I was disappointed by Suicide Squad. It doesn't feel like a boring disaster like Gotham Knights. I had a bit more fun here, I'll be totally honest. I, I wanna highlight some of the good things, but still, this is not a game I love. It starts off pretty strong, but by the end of it, again, disappointment is probably the biggest word for me here. Some folks might love it, and there's some merit here to discuss, but I just wanted to be upfront and not mince words. Worst game ever made? Like some people are kind of overblowing? No, but it's a game with an identity crisis that doesn't quite live up to the promise of the title. Kill the Justice League, you know? Let's talk. Uh, and just so you know, this footage was captured uh, running on PS5 and is spoiler free. We're trying to stick to pretty much stuff from the trailers so you can experience the story. Uh, so I played through the main story of Suicide Squad, mostly single player. You guys know I'm usually a solo gamer and I'm glad the a game accommodated me fairly well. After an awkward tutorial at the front, the game then kind of introduces you to the story and you slowly play through a, another tutorial, a longer one, uh, as the first like hour progresses. So uh, the name of the game here, Amanda Waller has uh, ripped Captain Boomerang, Deadshot, and Harley Quinn and King Shark out of prison and essentially taken them hostage with bombs in their necks for them to do her bidding. And it's actually saved the world from a nearly destroyed metropolis overrun by Brainiac's monsters. Brainiac himself has also brainwashed the Justice League, so they're the main threat. Now, you pick your person, but once you get out into the main world, like after the beginning, you can swap between them on the fly pretty instantly. And in a nice little spin to incentivize you playing and, and changing up the characters, some characters get uh, quote unquote psyched up to take the lead on certain missions, and then switching to them means you get XP bonuses and increased damage and stuff. Uh, and if you're playing with friends, the person who performed the best last mission gets to lead and choose what to do next. Uh, and what you're doing is going around open world metropolis, blasting aliens and doing main missions and side diversions that essentially unlock more things for you to upgrade, more things to grind towards, and sometimes better loot. Now, traveling around the environment is where the game is at its most creative. King Shark kind of just power jumps and dashes around, but he can do big slams. Deadshot has a limited use jetpack that is not that good with range, but it's surprisingly easy to blast around in and out of combat. And then Harley Quinn has a Spider-Man style grappling hook swing and, and can also uh, zip to ledges like in the Arkham games. This one takes some getting used to and feels a bit awkward some of the time. I didn't love it, but then Captain Boomerang has a stolen Speed Force gauntlet where he can throw his boomerang and then zip to it super fast, almost teleporting. Now, the way this works, in my opinion, is absolutely brilliant. From the animations to the precision feel of it, it's really cool once you get the hang of it. The traversal stuff overall is somewhat skill-based. The longer you play with a character, the more adjusted and competent you are to getting around, and the more fun it really feels. Like a very light Tony Hawk or Sunset Overdrive as you tie moves into sliding on the ground and jumping and chaining things and double jumping to keep airborne. And then if you can manage to handle all that during combat, it gets even more impressive. And I think this is where the game does succeed is it goes for the premise of like, what if the bad guys got a hold of a bunch of the good guys' weapons and are just kind of flying around the environments, causing chaos and blowing stuff up. This is where it works. Frankly, I found combat pretty fun. 
Shooting feels fast and chaotic and nice and tight and responsive, especially as you cruise around the environment. Uh, melee is not complex at all. I, you know, it's not Arkham, but hits feel good. And the game has an interesting system that encourages you to get in and melee a bit because meleeing stunned enemies will drop shield recharge. So there's a good push and pull dynamic to it. Uh, embracing your character's abilities also just make for some cool scenarios too. There is a lot of skill-based stuff here because like watching my early gameplay, I kind of suck. It takes a while to really understand the flow of the characters in both movement and combat. But a few hours in, the gameplay looks totally different because I really, really got a good feel for these characters and moving and grooving. And you know, that's pretty good stuff. For what they set out to do, it works here. It's all just a bit messy. Yeah, I mean, you can tell on screen here. Enemies explode, numbers flash on screen, there's shit everywhere, and as you level up your character, you have even more modifiers that pop up on screen with even more visual effects, as you're also using weapons with afflictions that might freeze or light enemies on fire. It's just a bunch of crap on the screen, and sometimes it kind of crossed my brain wires a little bit. There are options to turn some of this stuff off, which is good for your preference, but I left a lot of it on because this is how the developers left it on, this is how they intended you to play, and it really is like a lot of messy chaos. Still, it can be fun, especially when you're playing with others. I do want to be fair. I'm not just going to crap on the entire game when there's some stuff I did actually like. I'm not going to just lie. This is where I probably lost some people, the people commenting, how much did they pay you for this review, of course, but this is where we get to the bad part, you know? The combat and traversal is fun, but the framework, really everything else, is what brings the game down. Enemies are boring. They're all like gross, glowing, brainiac bio monsters with some different characteristics. Some need to be meleeed first, some can teleport, some are heavies, but that's really all there is besides the small little handful of bosses. This is where it really feels like an early days live service game. There's just one simple little enemy faction and that's it. And they expect you to just endlessly shoot the same thing. That's all you're shooting for a majority of the game. There can be a good bit of challenge to them sometimes, they can be tough, but frankly, they're boring. The other thing that brings down the fun is the mission types. Main missions are here and there, but the side missions like let you get more XP, get better guns, and access to more upgrade or crafting types from the various vendors at your home base. Some of these you should definitely do because they net you some useful things, especially like the first mission or so for each, but unfortunately the actual doing of these missions just feels like busy work. Go here, kill this many enemies, but maybe kill this many enemies, but only do it with a certain weapon or technique uh, or one type of attack. Uh, there, there's also these like defend these three points, A, B, and C, as enemies randomly spawn in type missions. And a surprising amount of missions, main missions, revolve around just protecting a payload. Like a car slowly drives through an environment and you need to swing around and kill enemies to keep it moving along. At one point in the story, it went in a very different direction, and then the game still managed to introduce another vehicle in a weird situation uh, that you have to protect. I got so tired of that very quickly. And the problem is, the game is built to be playable long-term, online and cooperatively with your friends. You can continue to grind after you finish the story and knock out a bunch of stuff and continue to grow your character and get access to better stuff. That's that's how these end games work. Like it keeps going after you finish the story. But it ran dry for me during the main quests and a few side quests. I really didn't have any intentions of seeing more. If the developers, publishers, whoever, want me to keep playing this game, buying skins from a store that is here, and uh, you know, checking out the updates and playing online, I really need more than just protect the car and shoot the one enemy type. In fact, there's a part in the story where they start to explain what you're gonna be doing in the end game, and it's so clear that that's what it is, it totally took me out of it. There's some fun to be had here with the game, like I said, the controls, the combat, Combat, but it's structured just around a type of game I don't jive with, and it doesn't really make sense here, especially because it's another one of those things where they plan to add more over time. This is where we might disagree. I have personal friends that have been enjoying this game and plan to play more.
more after the story. And uh, for as much as the Avengers game wasn't really a success, it did find a fan base. Some other people I actually know in real life who played it. So maybe I'm a dying breed of gamer. Still, it feels like for this game, it's a square peg that they tried to fit into a round hole. The game has a skill tree, but I didn't really find a lot of the upgrades very compelling. There are a few here and there that make a big difference, but they're few and far between and a lot of the other boring ones are just like very small percentage boosts to stuff I didn't really care too much about or really I didn't think too much about during combat. And the same goes for a lot of the other stuff. You know, weapon loot, crafting, and augmenting and upgrading weapons seems much more valuable after the main story. I was able to get by in the main game by minimally taking advantage of a lot of it. And I just kept going because I really wanted to see what happens next in Rocksteady's DC world. They understand DC Comics. You know, it's their own interpretations, of course, but they get it. And it shows here. A lot of cool DC characters show up, some of whom I did not expect at all. And it was really cool to see all of them. Not to mention a really gorgeous, fully realized Metropolis. The game world looks incredible, and so do the characters. Some of the facial expressions and emotions on the characters' faces, specifically Harley and Boomerang, are like next level stuff. The quality is here, the art direction is here, the cutscenes are interesting and compelling and cinematic. Some of the jokes actually got a laugh out of me, too. There's also a really good Wonder Woman, uh, and it's, it's great seeing a world built around the Justice League existing. That, coupled with some great music, it, it does hit at times. Uh, the first few hours of the game start really strong, and I was along for the ride completely. I wanted a new Rocksteady story, and I think uh, for some people it will be good enough, but for me personally, I expected more. Kill the Justice League, in quotes, like that, that is a bold concept. It's ambitious. It has so much potential for a lot of fun zaniness, some good comic book chaos and stuff you don't expect. And the game, in my opinion, didn't quite live up to that premise. Just like how Gotham Knights killed off Batman and presented a world without him, Kill the Justice League also swings with a big idea and then just doesn't really do as much as I'd hope. There are some memorable moments for sure in here, some stuff I, I genuinely really liked, but the overall thing, the overall story left me disappointed. Uh, without spoiling anything, it's so hard to talk about this without spoiling anything, uh, but I was just underwhelmed with the whole killing the Justice League part of the game. From a boss battle design level, yes, but also just from how it was presented. It wasn't funny enough. It wasn't serious enough. It felt like it didn't really know what it wanted to do. And then it ultimately did nothing and ended with a whimper. There's no interesting character arcs except for like one character. And it didn't amount to as much awesomeness as I was hoping. And it's really short. If you were expecting anything more, which I was, uh, I, I didn't end up being fulfilled. I think there's some merit and some fun ideas, both in the gameplay and in some good fan service moments, but it wasn't enough for me. It might be enough for you at some price point. Maybe you just want to check it out because it's Rocksteady's next story thing. So again, like I can't write it off as like the worst game ever made or anything like that, but I just wish I liked it a lot more. We will revisit it. I will jump in a year from now and see what they add. There's probably going to be more story expansions and stuff, cool characters, but some of that love is lost for now at least. But that's a before you buy. You know how this goes by now. I give you some pros, some cons, a bunch of information, and a lot of personal opinion. So now I wanna hear yours down in the comments. Everybody already has their mind made up about this game, but let's be reasonable. I wanna know what you love about the game, what you dislike about the game. Is it the whole model? Is it the story? Maybe you like the story. Maybe you're a Batman fan. <laughs> oh boy, I'll talk about that somewhere else. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments about all this stuff. Uh, and if this video helped you out at all, informed you at all, and maybe just seeing the gameplay help, clicking the like button does help us out. We would really appreciate that. And if you're new, consider subscribing and maybe hitting that notification bell because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time. Can't help it if you got butter fingers. Here you go, truck. Data. Okay.